Sean Hawkins first came to Montana as a ski bum. He was a lift operation specialist. <laughs> he took much pride in drinking PBR and bumping chairs at Big Mountain. Once the snow melted, he ended up with his hands in the dirt at Purple Frog Gardens. There he learned some of his most important life lessons like how to talk and work at the same time, make homemade beer, grow garlic, slaughter chickens, and process 400 pounds of food a week. He's not scared of bad advice or skiing a pond skim competition naked. Please welcome Sean Hawkins. A little higher, maybe. <laughs> this isn't going to droop on me, is it? I think that's good. That works. I just got done with a 100-mile bike ride overnight trip with my girlfriend, Beverly. I'm sitting in a hammock. I'm drinking wine, I'm eating cheese, I'm at Purple Frog Gardens, I'm listening to the 750 chickens that I'm gonna have to close tonight and open in the morning, and realized we had a great weekend, I'm tired, exhausted, and I'm gonna wake up with enough sleep that Monday morning will be great. I'm killing it. Usually I don't have a recovery day, but this is, this is a recovery day. Another farmhand, Heather Ma, sees us out there and runs up and says that we're doing everything correctly and I try to pat myself on the back and she just gets me. And she says, you're doing everything right but you're doing one thing wrong. And I'm like, what is that, Heather? And she's like, you should be on the water. And it, I kind of look up and I look at the sky and I see where the sun is and I realize it's pretty late in the afternoon. I don't think I really want to go on a river trip on a river I've never been on this late in the day when I have to work Monday morning. But for those of you who don't know Heather, she's born in Billings, she's been to the Yak and Back, she's put a kid through school, and well, you just can't beat her charm. And she told me I wouldn't even have to paddle. <laughs> so we packed up the canoes and the rest of the farm hands at the farm and headed north past Oldney, heading towards Trigo, and we stopped at the Stillwater Bar. Heather being true to her form and telling me this is going to be a relaxing event, decided that she would buy us some ranch-soaked hush puppies and some cheesy fries. I take a snort of whiskey, I put down a beer down my gullet, and I walk outside the Stillwater Bar to look at the dock out there, which is a very peculiar dock. For those of you who have not been there, it has a large log on it, about two canoe lengths long, it sits in the water. It takes about two tree huggers to wrap around it. It's covered in carpet. It's fixed on two ends with a rod going through so it rotates. It is fun for the whole family. <laughs> Some advice that I can give you is if you've never been on it, don't try to run. Then I look over at the Stillwater Landing to the east where they have a brilliant stage. The owners who are retired love music and they love to have shows. And this stage is beautiful. Great carpentry, joinery. It has 220 power hookup. It's got 110 hookup. You could plug in 30 Marshall cabs, crank them to 11 and you're still gonna have a good show. I've seen the Dirty Dozen brass band play there. My friend Vinny Ranazizi with 20 Grand Funk Band, New Wave Time Trippers. And it's a venue that you drive to and then park your car and they give you a wristband. You set up your tent, you go down, you listen to music, you can either go back to the bar, you can go to your tent. It's just a, it's a great venue. At this point in time, I was a farmer and a college student and my financial advisor AKA my wallet is pretty empty. And so I learned a little trick. And if you wait till dusk, there's a road that goes behind the Stillwater Lake. 
And if you have a canoe, you can canoe to that dock. You're not going to be part of the club. You're not going to get a wristband. But you can listen to free music. Well, I decided I was done staring at the bar and the landing and the dock. And we decided we had to get this trip on the road. So we all pack up and we go to the, where we're going to take out to drop off the, the vehicle. We get there. We do the drop off, the shuttle rig. We put the keys in the gas cap, and there's this couple sitting underneath the bridge named Dirk and Sally. They're sitting in this brilliant weaved Kmart special lowrider chair underneath the bridge with their feet in the sand, an ugly stick mounted between the two of them with a line in the water and a bobber. Sally, she was really intent at staring at that bobber, but Dirk was the social one. So he came up to us. And he was smart, clever. He could tell that we were not putting in there, but we were going to take out there. And asked us, where are you guys putting in? And we said, oh, up at the landing. And he goes, really? And he takes out a piece of paper, writes a little chicken scratch on it, and hands it to our friend Joel, Jojo. Jojo puts it in his pocket. And he says, I'm going to give you my goddamn phone number. And if you guys see some sucker fish, you better call me, because I like to put them in my garden to help with the corn. I'm thinking to myself, what's a sucker fish? But I didn't want him to know that I didn't know. So I was just like, will do. We jump in the car. We take off. We're heading down the road. And I get this tug on my shirt from my girlfriend, Bev. And she goes, Sean, what's a sucker fish? And I was like, I don't really know. I think they're in the river. <laughs> well, what happens? Like, if, how do we know we're going to see them? And I was like, oh, it'll become apparent. <laughs> and so we decided that was the end of that conversation. We get to the landing. We put the boats in the water. We have a canoe with me and Bev and my yellow dog named Yellow Dog. I have my other friends in a, another still water boat. Uh, it's a two-person breakdown canvas kayak. Very not made for any white water. And we had one white water boat with Joel in it, but it, we made it a still water boat instantly when we forgot the skirt for it. We're wearing flip-flops, Crocs, you know, the attire where that I would, did not need to paddle. And we start heading down the lake to the outlet, which becomes the beginning of the Stillwater River. And we hear in the distance this lady. And we, she's on her dock, because she has a house right there at the outlet. And we hear, you're not going to make it very far. <laughs> at this point, we're having type 1 fun, and I am committed. And I was originally from New Hampshire. And my state motto is, live free or die. <laughs> so I respond with, thank you. We continue down river. We get to the first portage, the second portage, the third portage. We're starting to hit type two fun. And then we realize the river makes this huge oxbow bend. And we end up six miles from the shore. We're at the point where we could hike back to shore, but we're in crocs. And we don't want to bushwhack that far, so we keep portaging. We hit this strainer. This is where the type three fun comes in. Uh, Joel loses his, one of his flip-flops. <laughs> Everyone makes it over the strainer but our boat. I'm in the canoe with just yellow dog in it. And my friend goes to pull the boat in. Water goes over the gunnel. The boat flips over. I'm looking at the bottom of the strainer. And I'm thinking to myself, this is not drinking wine or eating cheese. <laughs> and I figured, this is my way out. I found a hole. I'm going to swim through it. And suddenly, I stop moving. And I'm like, this is where I die. Because when you're in a strainer and you're not moving, that means you're stuck. But luckily, it was my friend Leaf, with his brute strength, somehow pulled me out of the water. I look at him. We kind of have this bro moment. We don't need to talk to each other. We just know Yellow Dog's still in the boat. That's upside down. So we flip that over. Miraculously, Yellow Dog jumps out of the boat and just starts doing Daytona laps on the island, just high on life. <laughs> it was an uplifting moment for the group. And then I don't know if any of you guys have gone morel mushroom picking. But you know when you're looking for morels and you find that one, and then they kind of come out of the woodwork? 
And you find more? Well, that just happened, but it wasn't Morel's. I just realized we've been hiking in poison ivy for at least four hours. Right now, at this point, it's uh, pushing midnight, one o'clock in the morning. Type three fun is not fun. Joel, is, I told him the best thing he can do is wrap his foot with his shirt since he only has one flip-flop on and we're going to have to continue the portage. <laughs> Some of us have decided to cover ourselves in mud, hoping that would extract the poison ivy out of our skin. We're not having fun. We're not talking. Sometimes we look over at Heather, all of us. Heather looks down. We look down. And Joel just starts laughing hysterically. And we're like, Joel, what is so funny? And he pulls this little piece of paper out of his pocket. And he reads the phone number and goes, I get it. And we're like, you get what? Well, we're the suckers. Thank you.